Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Todd Letts, and I am CEO of the Brampton Board of Trade. You are viewing our expert series. Uh, today's expert series is an interview with two fine gentlemen that are strong supporters of our business community here in uh, Brampton. Uh, they are uh, Mr. Badr uh, Shamim, who is a VP and portfolio manager with uh, Generation PMCA, uh, uh, and also we have joining us today is Jai Persaud, who's VP uh, of Capital Advisory for Generation PMCA Corp. It is a uh, capital advisory group, uh, wealth management. And uh, gentlemen, we're uh, happy to see uh, both of you here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having Pleasure. us, uh, Todd. Today's topic is uh, what is happening in the markets? What's happening in the stock markets? And we're going to explore what's happening in mergers and acquisitions as well. This is a very disruptive time for many in our business community. Some are doing very, very well and trying to keep up uh, with uh, the pace of growth. Others have seen their revenue decline steeply or uh, their, through operating restrictions uh, uh, decline uh, or, or diminish. And uh, that uh, causes business owners to think, think strategically about options. Uh, uh, options that are ahead. And, you know, before we, we go deeper into the mergers and acquisitions side, uh, Batter, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. You are a past president of the uh, Brampton Board of Trade and uh, uh, Generation PMCA has been a wonderful uh, supporter of our excellence uh, awards and other uh, economic development initiatives. 2020 is coming to an end. Uh, thank goodness uh, for many say. It's been a very volatile year uh, for our economy and for capital markets. How did your company, how did Generation manage the risk uh, in client portfolios uh, through the last uh, uh, nine months? Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, thanks uh, for giving us the opportunity to provide an update to Brampton Board of Trade members. Uh, as well as our audience, Todd. Uh, since our um, uh, director of research, uh, RJ Steinhoff, last appeared on your expert series in early May. Um, so you may recall RJ uh, talking about some of our risk management tools that we use uh, at uh, Generation to uh, decide whether it's a good time to be aggressive or whether it's a, it's a good time to be defensive. And so we started the year uh, on a defensive note given the elevated uh, market valuations uh, in late 2019. Uh, so when COVID hit the economy and uh, caused a contraction, in both the economy and, and a market correction uh, in uh, February and March, uh, luckily our uh, portfolios and investment holdings were not uh, impacted as severely uh, as the general market because of that defensive uh, posturing. Um, COVID obviously then forced, forced uh, both the workforce as well as general uh, public uh, to adopt more online uh, internet technology type of solutions to go about and uh, maintain fun functioning. Uh, and that also resulted in uh, money being piled up in uh, technology sector names uh, um, it, from an investment standpoint. Um, I think technology was already sort of in vogue uh, mm -hmm. throughout 2019, uh, but what COVID did was it supercharged its value uh, expansion. So at one point in time, uh, you know, the big five technology names, i.e. Facebook, Amazon, Alphabet, and Google, they were, they were worth uh, almost 48% of the NASDAQ, uh, NASDAQ's market valuation uh, and 24% of S&P 500. Um, so, you know, we certainly, we certainly, go ahead, you were going to say something. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just wondering. So uh, with the, that uh, position in the, in the market, that magnitude, that critical mass of the top of five, does that uh, inherently make, uh, now that COVID's hit, uh, does that inherently make uh, uh, client portfolios more risky uh, or, or less risky as, as a result? Because a lot of those companies are doing quite well. Right, exactly. And so, you know, when the clients uh, trust us with their, with their savings and their investment uh, planning, uh, they're actually telling us to operate within certain risk parameters. So managing the positions in the portfolio on an ongoing basis, on a discretionary basis, is what we do uh, as investment counselors and as portfolio managers. And so uh, we kept a pretty close eye on the technology sector. And uh, at one point in time, we did have four of those leading five technology names in our clients' uh, asset mix. Uh, so we certainly benefited from uh, from the trend in the market 
and that sector rotation that took, took place uh, in, uh, in March, April. Uh, but then we started to take those positions off uh, as the valuations in technology sector started nearing our estimates. Okay, good. And, and how about next year? How about how about next year? Uh, the composition of your portfolio. What's uh, what what uh, uh, looks best for you with twenty twenty one coming up? So it's interesting. We were actually a little bit earlier, and it, it's kind of we're, I'm, I'm almost seeing similarities between what what we were seeing in late two thousand nineteen and how two thousand twenty started off, and what where we were uh, going into uh, uh, into late summer and early fall. We started to become defensive. Uh, started to take some profits on the technology sector. And then all of a sudden, Pfizer, uh, followed by Moderna and AstraZeneca announced their, uh, their success in uh, vaccine prevention, uh, COVID vaccine uh, prevention testing. And since then, quite frankly, we're seeing yet another sector rotation. Uh, you're starting to see the technology sector stocks flattening as people, other, uh, other people like us are taking their profits. And you're seeing uh, money flowing into more value-oriented cyclical sectors. So you're going, uh, you're seeing a resurgence in the bank stock. You're seeing a resurgence in the real estate stocks, uh, in commodities, in oil and gas. Um, so we continue to be cautious. Uh, we're sitting uh, on a lot of cash as we're basically searching for undervalued securities uh, in the global markets. But at the same time, we continue to build some positions in those uh, undervalued cyclical sectors. So I know a lot of folks that are watching today uh, are uh, business owners uh, from Brampton, uh, uh, various uh, ages and stages. A lot are, uh, you know, toward the, the last 10 years, 15 years uh, of uh, uh, their, uh, uh, their, their management, their direct management. Uh, perhaps they have uh, children, the next generation to take over or are looking uh, uh, at various partnerships, uh, acquisitions, mergers, et cetera. But for the average investor, uh, the year ahead, uh, What's your what's your recommendation? Uh, I guess to ensure that their portfolios are uh, are on track to reach their goals. So I think um, you know the volatility that we have witnessed in the markets over the last uh, three quarters. It's it's it shows people what can happen to their investments uh, when the market or in the economy faces unpredictable macro risks. Uh, and so if you were finding uh, it difficult to sleep at night uh, given the volatility in your investment solutions. And now would be a good time to review your underlying investment holdings with your portfolio manager or investment advisor uh, to see whether or not they're appropriate for your own investment objectives and risk tolerance. If you're retired or if you're near retirement and you're going to be relying on your savings and investments to generate cash flow to complement your day-to-day -day life, uh, then your investment holdings need to reflect that. Uh, but if you're younger and you've got a longer term time horizon and the ability to take advantage of market volatility and pullbacks in the market to invest for a longer uh, period of time, then naturally your asset mix would have to reflect that. So I think, I think what 2020 has done is really given a lot of food for thought for, for people to review their investments. And I think it's a good opportunity as they prepare for 2021 to sit down and review their holdings with their portfolio managers and investment advisors. That's good advice, uh, Butter. And uh, December can be a very busy month traditionally uh, for people uh, with holidays, uh, etc. But um, with tax uh, rules and uh, tax time coming up shortly there uh, thereafter, um, it's a good idea to uh, schedule uh, an appointment with your advisor either this month or, or next month to ensure that uh, your portfolio is in good shape for uh, for your objectives and for the uh, the year ahead. Very good. Well, thank you. That was helpful, uh, uh, Badr. And uh, uh, I'm going to change uh, topics uh, uh, briefly now. Uh, we mentioned that we would talk about um, acquisitions. And uh, I, I think the question that we're going to pose uh, Jai off the top is, uh, is uh, or, or through his presentation, I understand he's got a couple slides uh, for us, is timing. You know, is now the right time to be considering mergers and acquisitions? Uh, I mean, it's a very disruptive time. To, uh, you know, it's, it's hard Hard to put yet another evaluation uh, decision uh, on the uh, uh, the docket of uh, owners and uh, and and managers, uh, but at the same time, it might provide a solution, a solution that should not be overlooked. So, uh, Jai, uh, VP Capital uh, Advisory for uh, uh, Generation PMCA, welcome and uh, tell us, talk to us a little bit about uh, mergers and acquisitions. Odd, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, for hosting us today. Um, 
you know, this year has been one of those real outliers. Um, none of us have experienced anything like this in our, our lives. And for some, it's been, uh, you know, a lot of folks have referred to it as the K recovery or, you know, there are other terms that are being thrown around. And what that simply refers to is that it's been a feast for some and for others, it's been a real challenge. Right. And, um, and I felt today that it would make sense for me to, instead of going through that again, I, I think it's, it's very well covered in the media and um, by others out there. Um, I, I felt that today's discussion should be focused on an area that's not often top of mind uh, for many entrepreneurs, but it should be. And, um, and that is acquisitions. Um, and so I'll, I'll start, uh, maybe I'll share, uh, I'll put together a few slides and I'll share it Thank you. Uh, with everyone. And um, then I'll jump into it here. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, taking some time and uh, kind of setting the context for mergers and, uh, and acquisitions as well. So we look forward to your, your PowerPoint uh, here. Yeah, here it comes uh, can now. You can you see? Okay, perfect. Yeah, we can see so it now. Go ahead. So um, I wanted to, um, to pose the question, uh, you know, given all the disruption and anxiety and stress and, <laughs> and um, the environment that we're facing, is this a good time to consider an acquisition? Um, and I'll, I'll walk through some of the ideas um, around acquisitions, but before I jump into it, perhaps I should frame this by giving you an intro to our advisory group. So as Badar mentioned, um, you know, Generation PMCA Corp is a family owned asset manager. Um, I head up the capital advisory group and our, um, our group supports a lot of corporate clients uh, while Badar's uh, side of the platform supports uh, clients in their wealth management requirements. We support uh, clients uh, in terms of growth of their business and aligning capital um, and providing uh, financial advisory services to help them to achieve uh, various corporate ob objectives. Um, we're often invited uh, to the table to assist in uh, transactions such as corporate acquisitions, uh, dispositions, repositioning. Uh, we also help to um, align capital for um, for. For, um, sorry, for construction, for expansion projects, um, and other corporate working capital requirements. So let's get back to acquisitions. Um, is now a good time uh, to consider acquisition? Um, acquisitions are often really uh, an area that, that seems to overwhelm a lot of entrepreneurs. You know, they're busy with their day-to-day -day management and uh, Often uh, the typical entrepreneur will only look at an, an acquisition if there's an opportunity that really stares them in the face. Mm -hmm. And they often ignore acquisitions as a tool to strengthen and, um, and really to provide some financial stability uh, in their business. Uh, sorry, I think I just, uh, let's try this again. There. Yep. Yeah, so, it's a very big, go ahead. There are, there are a couple of reasons why uh, an acquisition is a great idea in this environment. Um, given that sort of K-shaped environment that, that we referenced, uh, there are businesses that are really thriving in this environment and on the other end, and there are businesses that are challenged. Acquisitions bring these avenues where you can support that business and on both ends, really support the growth or um, strengthen a weak um, business in a in, in, uh, challenging uh, economic environment. Mm -hmm. uh, so here I pointed a, a handful of different uh, sort of key advantages that entrepreneurs should consider um, in today's environment. Um, acquisitions, typically, traditionally, uh, business owners seek to acquire other businesses as an avenue to drive growth. So revenue growth has traditionally been one of the uh, single most common reason why someone would go out and, and do an acquisition. But aside from revenue growth, we think that there are a handful of other um, you know, advantages that acquisitions bring. The first would be to strengthen your position. Um, 
in certain sectors, as an entrepreneur, you often know who your competitors are. You know who the strong ones are, who the weaker ones are, and what their strengths are and how they compete with you. Um, in an environment like this, where a certain segment uh, in certain sectors, you see businesses are challenged across the board. So it's not just a handful. Everyone's seeing the same cha challenges. Um, retail, restaurants is a good example. And one way to strengthen your position in some of those sectors is really to collaborate instead of competing. So look at the, you know, the folks that you've been competing hard with for, for a long time. And those are, you know, if it's um, a competitor that's also a board or trade member that you've gotten to know well and built a relationship over, over the years, now is the time to take advantage of that personal relationship. Uh, there may be an avenue for you to collaborate, whether it's through a merger of your businesses or a merger of uh, services to bring your costs down. So that's one um, very key advantage. Um, I, I touched on revenue growth. The other uh, that's often uh, not really sort of looked at as a key advantage is financial stability. Mm -hmm. Often business owners shy away from acquiring a slower growth business, but in an environment like this, where it becomes challenging uh, to grow, it becomes challenging to access um, financing for growth. Acquiring a slower growth competitor with a stronger balance sheet can give, give you a really good uh, competitive advantage. Uh, it strengthens your position. It stabilizes both businesses because you bring one that has financial strength and add it to one that has potential growth and you have a better package. Um, Another key advantage would be to expand your offering. Um, in some cases, you may have a business that, you know, you've got some really key customers and you service them well, but just with a small suite of services. And in an environment where, uh, you know, there are challenges, there may be avenues for you to acquire or merge with other companies that can expand that suite. Um, so now you can service, better service your existing large customers drive some revenue growth from existing business, but also expand your product breadth and, and market reach at the same time. Um, traditionally, uh, the second most uh, common reason for acquisition is scaling and consolidating of uh, certain business segments. Uh, consolidating is interesting because often um, in some segments you have many smaller players and some of them have unique um, expertise or technology where you, you're able to, as a, if you're a larger uh, business in that segment, you're able to acquire uh, and, and, and consolidate smaller players. I think in this environment that we're facing today, it's a little bit different. Uh, consolidation uh, in this environment it, it could just um, drive you to grow your business because you can acquire weaker players. And so it, that effectively allows you to grow your customer base, uh, bring your costs uh, down and drive economies of scale. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the other, one of the final sort of advantage that, that I thought was in, important today is a lot of businesses, um, you know, in, in our area, in Peel in particular, there are a lot of manufacturing companies and, you know, robotics and automation is something that's always top of mind. Um, in this environment, there are opportunities to acquire competitors who have already implemented great automation or great technology, but they are challenged in other areas. So this may be a situation where instead of you going out and doing research and development on your own, you may be able to acquire a smaller competitor or another business that's already sort of worked out the kinks and all the faults in that technology and you bring it on board um, and really augment what you're already doing to, again, strengthen your position and grow, uh, grow the business. Yeah, that, Jay, that's a, a really good uh, overview of some of the strategic reasons that uh, acquisitions should be looked at uh, seriously. I like that last one you said there, uh, kind of a second mover strategy. If there is uh, someone else in the market that has uh, taken the uh, the leap into a technology, a certain uh, and enhancing certain processes, and if you can acquire that, uh, uh, certainly that would be uh, advantageous. Uh, you mentioned too, uh, increasing your suite of uh, offerings or 
uh, you know, perhaps there are weaker competitors and you can consolidate uh, uh, so you don't have, uh, you know, it's more of a defensive, so you don't have to uh, fight against the, uh, or compete against the uh, the weaker one that might have uh, price points that uh, challenge some of your, uh, your products. Uh, the stability uh, uh, reason, I think is very, very uh, good as well. And, uh, and, uh, and leveraging leveraging uh, relationships no better time to do that uh, uh, and uh, to merge with a with a friend to uh, shore up and be ready for uh, the challenges you know a lot of people don't remember because COVID has been so impactful is we were in the middle of uh, three other uh, waves of disruption before uh, COVID, where you were in a, the technological wave was massive, about 12 different uh, technologies peaking at the same time, be it cloud, internet of things, uh, the demographic wave with the aging of uh, the workforce and some of the uh, uh, corporate uh, continuity, uh, knowledge continuity uh, among uh, uh, corporations. And uh, then, of course, uh, Bader knows this better than anybody, the geopolitical uh, wave of uh, change that we've seen with uh, uh, leadership positions in the United States, China, and, uh, and others uh, changing. So thank you for this uh, overview of uh, some of the key advantages. Uh, please, uh, please continue. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Uh, one of the other advantage that that's often overlooked, and I think it's important for business owners in, in Peel, in Brampton, uh, where we have a lot of established businesses, mature businesses, and they're often run by families that have been involved for a very long time um, and may not have that sort of second generation or others in the family to, uh, uh, to take over. Um, acquiring a business as a succession plan is, is something that's often uh, overlooked. And this is a situation where if you are a mature business owner and, and you see um, an upstart in your segment that's doing some, something exciting and it's intriguing to you, um, this is your opportunity to use your position to acquire those and mentor those people to grow a business and grow the value in your business. And in the process, what you end up with is you secure a buyer. And often uh, when you brought in younger entrepreneurs into an established business, you, you, you'll be in a position to sell your business to them at a premium. Is that what you call your adopt a buyer program? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and so I think while, while today is probably not the ideal time for, um, for a mature business to be sold, it is the ideal time to prepare that business to be sold. Um, and that's, that's really what we're saying here. Uh, look, look into your segment and see who the exciting competitors are. And maybe they don't need your balance sheet, but maybe it's a situation where there are um, synergies right off the bat and you can acquire them for the other idea uh, of selling the business to them down the road. Synergies um, and, and energy. I mean, it does take a absolutely. lot of energy, uh, perhaps with a, a, a new generation uh, in order to meet uh, the challenges that are ahead. So very, very good succession and talent is uh, something that should be considered seriously for uh, acquisition timing too. Very good. So we think that buying a business today can be a really good uh, defensive move. Um, it, it helps you to protect what you've built um, it, it can help you to really accelerate your growth, uh, scale the platform, protect what you, you know, the, the, the marketplace that you've established yourself in, uh, create new opportunities for new offerings, but really secure your financial position in an environment where there are a lot of uncertainties. Yeah. Um, I think one of the reasons why most business owners often shy away from acquisitions is because they tend to be difficult or they tend to be, um, acquisitions are really never sort of simple, right? So there, there are always a lot of moving parts. And I think the advantage to, to being a first mover is you can be creative, think it through and find your, uh, you know, the, the resources that you have that you can bring to the table, but also try to identify the resources on the other side to make the deal great for everyone. Um, so you have to be creative um, in, in getting it done. The other, the other uh, I, I guess, hurdle in some cases, how do you finance an acquisition? And this can be uh, something that, you know, most business owners, they, they look at 
acquisitions as if, if it's um, a succession acquisition, for example, if they're buying from somebody that wants to leave the business, there's a, a good chance that that entrepreneur wants cash. It doesn't always have to be that way. I think um, a great acquisition is one that can be done creatively using a, a combination of different financing options. You don't always have to acquire a business with cash. So here's um, a dozen ways that we, we look at, um, you know, ways to finance. Uh, the, the first and obvious is cash. Um, we see very few acquisitions actually done with cash. Um, there are other ways. So uh, equity is a good way to do this. Um, earnouts, joint venture, asset back loans, uh, mergers. Um, I touched on mergers uh, a lot in this presentation. I think today, in today's environment, this is one of the the ways to acquire business through uh, merging. Uh, bank loans, uh, issuing debt to the ventures, um, preferred shares, vendor take back financing. Um, for larger businesses, there are you know, some other options, um, seeking a private equity partner or leverage buyout partners. Um, and in some cases, uh, doing uh, an equity share issue or an IPO into public markets. Uh, so depending on the size of the business, depending on the segment that you're in, uh, there are many different ways to do these. Um, and the, 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 these are just the obvious ones. Um, yeah, Jai, that's a, that's a great menu uh, to consider. Uh, uh, definitely number three, uh, you want to earn out before you burn out, right? <laughs> and uh, it, it, this is a very good, uh, good menu. And, uh, uh, you know, we're, uh, I'm just looking at the headlines uh, this week and you're seeing lots of uh, different uh, uh, merger and acquisition uh, uh, talk in the media, casinos in particular uh, uh, in the news uh, uh, today. Uh, but it's nice to have a full menu of options that uh, levers that you can tools that you can uh, uh, use when you're considering uh, an acquisition. So thank you for that. The other thing I should stress on, Todd, is that if you're... Um... Don't wait until you're in a weak position to do this. Exactly. Uh, start thinking about these options while you're in a position where you're still operating, you're still cash flowing, and you're not desperate to move. Um, you have a bit of um, currency, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, you know, I think a lot of folks out there are, you know, especially professional investors, uh, people are on the fence. They're looking for great deals. They're looking for distressed assets. Um, but I think that there are other ways to get around those types of uh, transactions. And it's really to be, you know, be proactive and going out, looking at the, the community that you've built around you. Uh, look at your closest competitors, the people you've fought with fiercely over the last, you know, two decades. They're the ones that are probably your best merger partner. So, I guess um, to wrap it up, I think that we would summarize this as saying now is a good time to, to consider acquisitions. Um, there are a lot of avenues to do this um, and there are huge advantages to doing it, uh, to strengthen your position, to grow your business. Um, now, now is definitely a perfect time to start looking out there. Great, Jay. Thank you so much uh, for that uh, overview. And uh, you've made some really, really good uh, points with respect to the strategic reasons why uh, the menu of options in terms of how to go about it, uh, some good tips about, about the uh, less than rational um, uh, challenges that come in a decision to to acquire or merge or or, or be bought out, and, and I'm talking about the emotions that are wrapped yeah. uh, uh, up in uh, these life changing uh, decisions for a lot of uh, folks. Uh, the energy that's involved to make an informed uh, uh, decision, uh, do it when you have uh, the energy, and as always, uh, uh, talk it through with a professional with individuals like Bader and Jai, Jai that uh, uh, can help you uh, with um, a strategic and rational uh, assessment of your strengths and weaknesses, gaps, and uh, that of a potential partner as well. So thank you for this uh, very informative uh, uh, overview of uh, both uh, the markets, the what, what we see ahead, uh, steps we can take now uh, to prepare for uh, 2021, and, uh, and, and acquisition as a strategic tool 
tool uh, uh, to, uh, to, um, to meet some of the disruptive challenges that uh, a lot of companies are, uh, are, are seeing right now. Anything further? Any last uh, comments uh, about her, uh, Jai? Uh, no, I, you know, on my part, I would simply like to wish you and the staff and all the members uh, uh, all the best during the Christmas and the holiday season. Stay healthy, stay productive. Uh, know that we're, we're all in this together. And, uh, you know, uh, we're looking forward to coming back and maybe uh, towards the end of the first quarter, uh, provide an update of how uh, our engagement with the members have been going. Uh, and that's about it. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. And uh, the feelings mutual. Uh, best to you and uh, your family and uh, uh, the firm uh, uh, during these uh, these holiday times. I see you've got an evergreen behind you there, uh, getting ready for the festive uh, season. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Any uh, Jai? Any uh, last comments? Well, I'd say that you know, um, please, if any any anyone wants to have a sounding board, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, this is something that's not often top of mind. And um, it's just an idea where we can add some value. Um, and we're hope, hopeful that, uh, you know, 2021 will be different here, different than 2020 anyway. Um, I think there's a lot, a lot of good to come. Uh, there's a lot of good news uh, on the horizon. Me too. Me too. That's great. And it's great to have a positive partner. As you say, someone is, at, uh, is accessible and uh, will be uh, a sounding board for you to bounce ideas off, uh, off of you. Uh, uh, Jai, it's always good to see you. Batter, uh, thank you uh, so much again. Everyone I've met in the firm uh, is accessible at uh, Generation PMCA. Uh, uh, Jai, the VP Capital Advisory. Uh, Batter, the VP of uh, uh, of uh, both wealth uh, management and uh, uh, portfolio management and a por portfolio uh, manager with uh, PMCA, uh, uh, Generation PMCA. So happy that you were able to join us uh, here uh, today. Uh, if you're uh, interested uh, in uh, viewing this expert series again, uh, it is uh, being recorded and uh, it's on our uh, website or will be up on our website very soon. Uh, some very good advice uh, in uh, today's uh, session. Uh, we have a number of these expert uh, series interviews on various business uh, topics. Uh, this one can be seen at uh, Brampton bot.com slash expert series, along with others on um, scenario planning, for example, for your business, um, as well as cash flow, um, accessing government programs. A number of very practical uh, expert interviews are available for members of the Brampton Board of Trade through bramptonbot.com slash expert uh, series. As well, um, we are finding new, innovative, fun ways to uh, connect businesses during the pandemic coming up on Thursday night. That's December 3rd. Those of you that are interested in international trade, it is our annual trade reception. We'll have a number of of, uh, uh, trade commissioners from a variety of, uh, of countries, uh, the States, Netherlands, uh, uh, Vietnam, uh, etc. We'll also have a showcase on investment opportunities uh, in Brampton, why Brampton remains and continues to be a wonderful place to invest uh, in uh, uh, commercial, industrial, uh, uh, and, uh, and real estate. Uh, so that is uh, uh, on our website and uh, the trade reception on December 3rd. December 8th, uh, all of our members look forward to getting together for a holiday reception again in the evening. And uh, I understand that Christy, our VP, has some uh, fun caroling and cookie decorating and all that good stuff. Uh, uh, it's a great opportunity. Uh, we use the Hopin platform, one of the new technologies that we're using here to do some one-on-one -on -one networking, some great plenary networking. I think the mayor is going to be there, counselors. It uh, should be a really fun event on the evening of December 8th. Uh, if you're interested, if you're a manufacturer and you're interested in all things innovative, uh, Industry 4.0, integrating new technologies, uh, be sure to check out our Brampton Innovation Network. It meets at eight o'clock on January 12th. That's right, folks. We're already planning for the next year, 2021, and it's going to be a very good year because we're going to get through our current challenges and we're going to get through it together, together stronger. I want to thank my guests today, Jai Persaud and and Bader Shamim, and look forward to seeing you again uh, at a Brampton Board of Trade event. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank Have you. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Take care now. Thanks.